Hi, everyone. Chris Johnson from Money Morning. Super Microcomputer Incorporated is down 18% today after the company didn't do something it normally does, or at least over the last six quarters it's done. Investors are asking themselves, should I be a buyer or a seller here with this big fall? It's 35% off its highs. I'm going to answer that question for you because April 30th is their earnings date. It's right around the corner, and I've still got my target of $1,500 on the stock. I'll explain why the stock's down, what levels I'm looking at right now and where the risks are, and my target of $1,500. It's only going to take us five or 10 minutes, and you'll be a wiser investor for spending it with me. Let's jump into it right now. All right, guys, Super Microcomputer Incorporated is trading down 18. It may be down 20% by the end of the day. Everybody's asking why. I'm going to answer that first, and then we'll get on to whether it's a buy or a sell at this point. So first of all, why is it down? Well, the company came out this morning and confirmed their April 30th earnings conference call. That's normal. Companies do it all the time. There's something different, though. They left something out. Last quarter, and let's look at the chart as I walk you through this. Last quarter, the company did the same thing on January 18th, right? They came out and said our conference call is going to be on the 29th. So the market now knows when the official earnings are coming out. But last quarter and the four or five quarters before that, they gave updates to what to expect. So in other words, last quarter, they came out and said, revenue's very strong, sales have been strong. So bam, instantly the market says, this is going to be a great earnings report. And in that case, they took the stock from right here, which was down around that $300 and ran it up to 500 bucks before the actual earning numbers hit right? So it is the company setting an expectation there. And of course, we know their numbers were fantastic, took it all the way up to $1,000. We're going to talk about that key level in a minute. But then everything rolled back over a 35% decline. And again, we'll talk about that in a second. But the company this time around decided not to give us any guidance. They came out and said, this is when our conference call is going to be, but we've got nothing to say in terms of what you should expect. That's why the stock is down 18, 19, 20% or so, because the market is not getting what they've come to expect, which is an update ahead of the earnings. That little glimpse, that peek over the shoulder at what can we expect? Everybody loves it when you get something a little early, right? So everybody starts jumping on and expecting the worst, and that's not a bad thing thing right now if you've been looking for an opportunity to buy the stock. So I'll explain it. Right now, we're discounting. We're seeing the market discount the value of that pre-earnings news, that little bit of a peak, right? And we're down 18%. Let's say we go down to $700 and rest right at that round number. Uh, do you turn into a buyer there? Do you sit around and wait until after the earnings announcement? Let me give you three different scenarios on how this plays out very quickly. And it all leads to the fact that, yes, I am looking to buy the stock on this dip. And I'll show you the prices exactly in a moment and why. But if you think about the three outcomes of the earnings call on the 30th, they can either meet, beat, or miss their expectations, right? It's not one or the other. It's three. And you can factor in. Maybe they give guidance that's going to make it more positive or negative. But let's take those three. So if the company misses right now, they come out and they miss the expectations that Wall Street has set. What has happened already? Well, the market is already pricing the stock as if there is bad news in that report. It is pre-priced for not failure, but certainly some disappointment. So in that case, and the, the earnings report, let's say, is disappointed, and the company's already priced that in, means that you're going to see a little more downside potential. Maybe it goes from $700 to $600, which is no, I'm not saying that's no small move, but it moves down a little bit more, it's not going to make a move from 700 to 400 or 700 to 300. You're not going to see another 20 or 30 or 40% pullback on that news. It is, as they say, baked into the cake. It's just bad news being baked into the cake. So that's outcome number one. The company misses and we're really already priced for that to happen, or at least you could say we're much closer to that. So the downside potential from here through the earnings report 
has become much reduced. Second outcome is they could meet expectations. So in other words, they look at the lines and they say, hey, we hit all of the marks at Wall Street set for us. Well, you know what? Look at what Wall Street is expecting from them, and that is some resounding growth as we move into the next quarter. Uh, More than 100% year-over-year growth in earnings and the same in revenue. In that particular case, they're hitting some marks that are very high, and with the stock already being sold, for the worst-case scenario, all you've got at that point is upside potential. The stock at that point would go back up to 1,000, back up through 1,100, and then 1200 And by the way, my target on the shares, $1,500 in the next 6 to 12 months. So in this particular scenario, I don't like seeing the down, the, the move down today. But I look at it as if the company meets expectations, we're going to be right back at that $1,000 mark and moving higher. The third option is that they beat expectations just like they did last quarter. And then I look at the fundamental picture here right now, and I'm not seeing a slowdown in anything that is in the AI infrastructure. And keep in mind, NVIDIA and Supermicro Computer Incorporated are the two companies that are at the core of AI. You've got the chips, and then you have the server and the storage with SMCI. That is a huge thing to be in a business that is growing as quickly as it is. So it's hard for me to imagine that we're going to see something that is going to be terrible. It's better to imagine something that's going to be stronger or easier to imagine that. And in that case, if they come out and they beat expectations, this stock is going to turn into something that is strapped to a rocket. You're immediately going to see all the people that have been selling it down to that 750 level or 700, let's say it goes down to buying it back as a fear of missing out kind of feeling takes over. And this stock will break through that 1000 level, 1200, and then head right towards that target of 1500. Let's talk very quickly about the levels that I'd be buying at. And I keep mentioning 1000. 1000 is a special price right now for SMCI shares. You can see when I mark it here, that 1000 level stopped the stock in February. And this drop was when the company came out and announced that they were going to be issuing some convertible debt. They're bringing money in so they can fund their business plan, right? Um, but nevertheless, the company was discounted at that point as it should be because it's a dilutive matter for the uh, the equity shareholders. So we saw it pull right back. The, the In this case, the 20-day moving average, which we're not going to talk about, kind of acted as support. But that 1,000 level really was something that reversed it. Then we've got the 1,000 level. You broke through it, popped right back down again, and notice how we've been sitting here at 1,000. Round numbers matter. That's the first lesson here, folks. Round numbers, when you're trading up around $1,000, they absolutely matter. If you think about it, it, and I've got all kinds of all kinds of stories I can tell about these, but it's easier for investors and traders to think about round numbers than it is, say, a number like $279.60. No, it's $300. Or $841.21. No, you're going to look at $800. You round up or down, and everybody in the market does this. That's why the round numbers get sticky. Notice the support resistance we had at 800, and we're breaking through that right now. 900, you had support, boom, 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 and that's been broken through. That next level down is 700, which is the bottom that we saw in February. That's the mark you watch right now. That's the first point where I start adding to my SMCI. And I do have a position in SMCI right now. If it breaks through that 700 level, I'm going to add to it again at 600. And then again, if it were to go back to that 500, and that is where some magic happens, the 200-day moving average is there, and something that you're not going to see anybody else talk about. And it has to do with the options market. This is a chart of the open interest configuration for the May expiration options. And don't tune out right now, because this is where it gets interesting and the mechanicals of what's going on with the stock. And it explains why $1,000 has been seemingly impenetrable, right? So what you're looking at is where all of the options have been bought and opened for the May expiration, the third Friday of May. This big bar here, That's the $1,000 level strike. You've got 
This is the largest amount of open interest out there. It adds up to a number of the other strikes in and of itself, right? That is the market or the options market basically putting their speculation on the stock going above 100, right? Because you buy those because you want the stock to go above in the case of a call. Well, what happens is that that $1,000 turns into a little bit of resistance from a mechanical perspective. The options market, the people who have sold those options, they have to start hedging themselves in the case that it breaks above $1,000. All kinds of things start to happen when you hit strike prices that have this much open interest. And it happens with put open interest as well. It just goes reverse. Now, for now, this is helping to stop the stock at 1000 there's a silver lining I'll explain in just a second that goes along with this. It's actually could be the biggest catalyst that SMCI shares see. So when we look down here at these red bars, those are your put open interest uh, strikes that are standing out. And it's no surprise. There's 600, there's 700, there's 800. So notice how there's more put open interest as we get lower. That means that $800 gives up a little easier than the 700. And if it gives up I'm going to bet that that 600 is not going to break. If it did, it runs into that 500 strike, which is almost as big as that 1,000. That's the point where I back the truck up twice and drop everything I've got into SMCI. Speaking figuratively, you have to diversify your portfolios. Always remember that. That $500 in terms of the open interest also goes hand in hand with that 200 day moving average. So if you're one of those people that's sitting there going, Matt, nah, it's got another 30 or 40% to go, $500 is a price that you want to put in and say, if it hits 500 bucks, I'm going to be adding this to my portfolio. For the others like myself that are looking to dollar cost average in, I look at 700 and then eight or 600 to add in. And I do it aggressively because this stock has much more potential now to actually rally after an inline report. Remember, an inline report is going to beat the expectations of what the market is saying right now. Speaking of expectations, I always love to cover this when we talk about SMCI. It is still very lightly covered by the analyst community, which means you're going to see some analysts that are finally going to come in and say, all right, I'm going to issue a buy recommendation on SMCI because it's now at $800. It's not at the $1,200 high. They look at that and say, that's a 50% move for it to get to $1,200. Yeah, I want to be on that move. They like to have these stocks in their portfolio. So expect to see some analysts coming in and giving their opinion over the next couple of days with this pullback. All right. So let me summarize it all for you because I've given you a ton of information. The stock is trading lower simply because the company didn't provide that guidance, that little guidance when they confirmed their earnings call today. That's something they may continue to do as we move forward, simply to avoid these situations, right? You don't want to give the market these expectations if you don't think you're going to fold up to them or at least meet them, right? But the silver lining of this is the move today has now discounted the stock ahead of earnings. I love these situations, especially when I want to add to a position, because if they come out and they meet or exceed their earnings number, the stock is going to be on fire as everybody starts jumping back in. The people who are selling today are going to be afraid that they're going to miss out on another huge run in SMCI. $1,000 will give you some resistance at the bottom. $500 is your bargain basement price on the stock. I don't think we see it. $700 is where I start to buy. $600 I add, and I still expect us to break through that $1,000 level and head up to $1,500 over the next 6 to 12 months. There you have it. A nice little picture of what's happening today and the opportunity, not the worry that I've got, the opportunity that you should see in SMCI's one-day pullback. Hope you have a great day. And as always, I wish you the trade, best trading success. Make sure you like and subscribe to get more information like this.